For most of us, our first encounter with the Dharma is not through a person. It's through books or Dhamma talks, ideas you can read or listen to, techniques you can try. And we can come up with all kinds of misunderstandings as a result. You have to remember that back in the days of the Buddha, when you first met the Dharma, you met it through a person. The Buddha was, of course, the first example. And then the people you trained. We have to remember that Dharma is primarily a quality of the heart. You see this in the first meditation instructions that the Buddha gave to his son, Rahula. It starts out with the principle of truthfulness. That's a virtue. It's not a technique. It's a virtue. And then he had Rahula reflect on his actions before, during, after the actions were done in a way that embodied, <coughs> embodied being responsible, being compassionate, having integrity. Those are the qualities that form the context of the Dharma, and it's within those qualities that you then learn about instructions, about how to analyze things, how to focus on the breath, how to develop concentration. But it always has to be within that context of virtues. And these are best picked up by being around people who are virtuous. Part of those instructions to Rahula, and that if you saw that you'd made a mistake, talk it over with someone who's more advanced on the path. This is one of the functions of admirable friendship. This is why the Buddha set up a monastic order to begin with, where people would be trained by being with other people. People you could talk to, and people who would watch you, because it wasn't just up to you to decide if your behavior was right or wrong. And if they saw you doing something that was out of line, they could tell you right away. This is something that a book or a recorded Dhamma talk can't do. And you notice with the, with the monks, they get together every two weeks. They have a meeting. What do they talk about? Does someone chants the precepts. To remind them of the virtue that holds the community together. And that the Buddha saw was the most important thing to pass on. So always remember that if you read about the Dhamma, you're getting only a, a shadow of it. Admirable friendship, being with people who practiced, as the Buddha said, is the whole of the Dhamma. It's one through them that you learn about the Dhamma. Of course, nowadays, you, as I said, you learn about it through impersonal means. But the Dhamma you learn through impersonal means is impersonal. It's just a shadow. It's like a photograph when you want, when you want somebody who's flesh and blood, three dimensions, four dimensions, you see them acting in time. That's how the Dharma is really passed on. As you stay with people like that, then you learn to pick up a lot of their attitudes, a lot of their habits. A lot of this is by osmosis. Think of being with a John Fu and a John Sawat. A lot of the lessons I learned from them weren't during the Dharma talks. We were seeing them, being with them as they went through the day and dealt with different situations being with Ajahn Fuang when he was sick, day in, day out, being here with Ajahn Sawat as he dealt with all the strange things that happened in America that happened to come up into the monastery. And so if you don't have contact with somebody like that, okay, you have to remember that you've got to be doubly sure that you're going to try to be as virtuous as you can, because a lot of these virtues are they're nothing really foreign or exotic, but the things that people have tended to overlook. A lot of people say, well, now that we've got the internet, the world has changed and the old way of doing things doesn't apply anymore. It does not apply to the Dhamma. 
to know the Dhamma, you have to be virtuous. You have to be a good person. The Dhamma is that precious that only virtuous people can really know it. You can't storm it with a technique or storm it with your reading skills, thinking skills. It's something that has to be approached with virtue, with truthfulness, with circumspection. Because as the Buddhist instructions to Rahula show, you can't just go in with an attitude that, well, I know what the books say about this, or I know what I think about this, I'm just going to act on that, come what may. There are times when you act on your best intentions with best understanding, and if you're sensitive, you realize, oops, there was a mistake. And you have to go back and reconsider. Or when you learn something, you don't put your stamp of approval or disapproval on it right away. You watch. You test it. You test yourself, too. That's the part of the testing that people often forget. They test what they see in the books or understand from the books or hear from a Dharma talk or technique. And the technique on its own doesn't do it for them, so they throw it away. And the fault may be with the technique, but it may be with them. Maybe they're really not up to the technique, not up to the test. So you have to be doubly strict with yourself. Not strict in a s grim sense, but just really, really honest. After all, the two prerequisites that the Buddha asked for in a student. One, that the student be truthful, and two, that the student be observant. In other words, precisely the qualities he was teaching in Rahula, training in Rahula, and setting example himself. The Buddha was a very truthful person. He was very observant. It's always amazing to see throughout the venue when someone has misbehaved and they get called into the Buddha's presence, and the Buddha asks them, did you say this? Did you do this? And there was something about being in the Buddha's presence that people who were devious at other times, they weren't devious with him. He admitted, yes, that's what they did. Well, there's a story about the monks studying with the John Mun. He would send them off to a cave or forest someplace where he sensed their practice would go well. And occasionally they would come back with the idea that they were awakened. And he could see that they weren't. He just wouldn't say much. He just said, well, stay here for a while. And John Fuang was telling me about this, and he said that it usually take about three days, and they'd realize, nope, they weren't awakened. It was a mistake. Just being in his presence, he didn't have to say anything. So remember, the Dharma is personal quality. And if you can find someone who embodies those qualities, you want to stay with that person. Let that person criticize you. Let that person observe you. And you, of course, observe that person. Try to be as observant as possible. See what good things you can pick up. Again, with the John Fuang and the John Sawat, their personalities were very different. And neither of them encouraged me to try to clone their personalities. But I noticed that one thing they had in common was this real solidity, this real honesty. general determination to do things as skillfully as possible. That's something you want to pick up. If you don't have any people around you, well, you've got to be doubly sure that you learn how to strengthen it within yourself. Because as I said, the Dharma is, you can talk about it, you can sit and meditate, but you can't really approach the Dharma unless you have these qualities of truthfulness, compassion, integrity. That way, when you meet up with difficulties, you're not waylaid by them. If you meet up with criticism, you don't just chalk it off to the other person's anger. Sometimes people criticize out of compassion. Like the image the Buddha gave of the small child that's got a sharp object in its mouth. You've got to do what you can to get the object out, even if it means drawing a little blood. 
because otherwise if the child swallows the object, they could die. Vasakaki talks about this a lot. People who are unwilling to listen to criticism are never going to make any progress in the practice. All of these things come down to qualities of the character. Which is why admirable friendship, as the Buddha said, is the whole of the, the practice, or the whole of the holy life. Not that your admirable friend can do it for you, but you learn an awful lot that they're from that person that you couldn't learn any other way.